all kinds of conversations, having to be creative, having to dig deep, having to stretch. Right. Um, it's so needed, like waking people up. It's, kind of like a good thing that it's happening to everyone. Yeah. Rather than just the artists or just yeah. the scientists or whatever, or just you, the women, just the men. Right. Um, or any thing in between. Yeah. <laughs> so it feels like we actually have a common conversation happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. You no. Know, the the virus doesn't care right. so it's taking down people in the offices of the highest leaders of the world yeah um every single country rich and poor yeah so it's um yeah it's it's good i mean it's it's bad, but it's good yeah but you know i for me i mean i've always You've been there. Huh? Pretty me. You've been there on the edge, sort of, maybe with your artistic practice. The essence of it is sort of being on that, you know, like yeah. balancing rope. Yeah, and just sort of getting in there and just, but I mean, there's aspects of my practice that are brave and bold. Yeah. And then there's other parts of me that are very much craving security and and um stability all right well your mom so, too i'm sure that that kicks in big time well yeah yeah so but i'm actually really um like i also feel really strongly for a long long time that music we've talked about this mm. that music education um which is our world, you know, we go, well, how can you make an impact um, in the big sense? And it's always in the little, little moments, right? It's mm. that how you actually make a big, it's the, the little interactions, the seed planting, the, mm. the, the moment by moment, conversation by conversation. Um, but I felt for a very long time that music education uh, was getting ready for to be just broken open because it has been so the same yeah. in North America since the 50s. Mm -hmm. And there's people hanging on to that super tight because it's what we know. Yeah. It works to an So there's all these structures that are just based around a certain way of operating which, as we know, is coming from a philosophy that is post-industrial revolution mm -hmm. right? and is about containment and mm -hmm. um, some ways coercion yeah. and hierarchy, composer yeah. and conductor as, as agent maker, like they're in charge of all the decision making. And, you know, and what I found, you know, even just working in organizations where that structure is the unrest amongst the community is so, so palatable. It's just because people don't have voice and they don't have autonomy and they feel, you know, mm. so, um, so now jazz can offer opportunities for more agency, but because jazz has had to find a way to fit into this, it's a and all the good juicy like folk music on the ground like let's learn by doing has been stripped away to fit into this conservatory model of music yeah. education and the net result is it's like you know people need to recover from music school which is That's me <laughs> right me too i mean oh. i mean I, I, yeah i did education so i got out of performance because i was like like I was sick. I was like, so there was so much anxiety, so much pressure, scary, like uh, feeling terrible. And like, why am I doing this? I don't even like this anymore. This is just not fun. I just feel mm. terrified all the time. Um, I got out, went into music education, um, which freed me up. And then I started improving because there was no pressure to perform. I was like an ed person. So what did it matter? And then of course my playing just works. <laughs> Cause yeah. uh, I just said, I'm doing this for fun now. I'm not doing this because I have to, or I have some crazy mountain to climb. I'm just, exactly. I just love music again. 
And I was like, oh, there's a lesson there. Anyway, so um, so I know you feel the same way, and I'm sure you're my passion for how do we do things differently um, is because of my own experience of feeling this like music went from something that was just fun and ah, uh, like I just wanted to do to feeling um, so much pressure and so much uh, stress and, and, and unhappiness. And I had to reclaim music for myself yeah. and bring it back to, for me, it's almost like a spiritual practice, you know, art making is like the sure. closest thing we get to the divine, you know? And it's so weird. Like that it's, if you think of, if I want to think about it on a really stripped down authentic way of what music is and experience, it's so weird to go into those realms where it's, not joyful anymore and i don't mean that it needs to be joyful at every moment like if no. there's an artistic struggle and you're like you know and it's personal and you're trying to achieve something and you're frustrated like you know that's not necessarily joyful but overall the whole sort of strive to achieve something for yourself artistically and you say for spiritually it's just so weird to have those external factors yeah um guiding us unwantingly in a way and giving us all that stress and and maybe shame too i mean i dealt yeah. a lot with a lot of shame, shame. for instance when you say it music didn't become fun for me that happened when i was like seven mm -hmm. so it was like 20 years of not really fun and then you know like unpeeling the onion <laughs> for years to get to like, oh, this is what that essence when I was five and six was, yes. and this is where I want to exist, you know? Yes, yes. Um, it's unlearning. Yeah. It's an unlearning. Well, my question for you around that is, so um, first of all, how did you, why did you just not walk away? That's first question. Second question is, was there someone something an experience a person a moment an event a something that kind of was a bit of a awakening to a new way of feeling feeling the music ultimately I see as an embodied practice the feeling of music for you in your body felt different and less mm. like uh, like less contracted and more expansive so yeah. two questions Ooh. Two questions. So why did I not walk away? I, don't know, I mean, music is it's such a powerful thing, you know, and as much struggle that you might have dealing with making it in systems that are old and, and oppressive and shaming and, you know, not very, you know, not very, not designed and cultivated to build you up as a person, but more break you down or at least test you to see if you can't be broken down so you can sort of survive in it. It's very, so where, where I grew up in, so I grew up in Serbia and I went to yeah. a very classical um, European system. And even when I went to, to study jazz, it was sort of a, just a different iteration, same thing, you know, cutting sessions and all that. But the reason I didn't leave because, you know, I kept listening to music and kept being drawn in and you just, you can't deny being in complete awe when you hear, I think there's like small moments where somebody sort of shows you something. I remember mm -hmm. getting a Love Supreme pirated mm -hmm. CD in Belgrade in like late nineties. They would sell these illegal CDs they didn't care and I didn't know and what to get and the guy was like take this this will be good and then when I heard it I was like oh my god right so like those small moments like that like you said lots of small right. moments then there was a jazz singer that came and I heard her sing she's an American jazz singer for a workshop one summer and I was kind of like just scared by the immensity of music so lots of moments like that um and then what was the second question? My How question did I was, to, um, so yeah, you're, so you're living in this 
environment that just felt ha- like kind of like the blankets yeah. waited on you. Mm-hmm. And then it seems that you must have had a moment where you started like, as you said, peeling the onion layers off or lifting the blankets off your back. Um, what was, what were the conditions? What were the conditions that helped you to feel less heavy in it and feel mm. more um, free? I see. I think there's two things. I think one was when I started uh, doing these workshops that I do, these collaborative compositions. It's almost when I became more, I had a role of service to others. Okay. So it was not focused on me. Okay. It's lifted the pressure from me performing, but it's also had this great sort of sense of service, basically. And then in those experiences of the other people, mostly young, just having sort of aha moments and and making music together and this sort of empowerment and weird sort of accidents that would uncover something really cool musically and not just cool but just powerful um, and the bond that was being created just all this this you know magical sort of combination that was amazing and I and deeply inside me I yearned I wish that I had those experiences growing up rather right. than ones that I did so, so true yeah and then my personal sort of artistic unpeeling that was a very long process because I think it's just like childhood trauma you can't just be like oh it's gonna so that was getting away from all kinds of music that I did I did a lot of Balkan music which is oral yeah. I was learning from a Roma person that was coming here to Vancouver year after year. And that's just an oral tradition. It's completely, even the lifestyle is different. So I started learning from that and then just experimenting by myself. And then, and this year actually, which is 2020, it was the first time that I put out an album. And it was also at the tail end of a year of psychotherapy that I did. Yeah, and the album came out of that, and then when I put it out, it's almost like I entered into the rest of my life. Sort of, I allowed myself this sort of freedom and self-esteem to be like, "Here's something that I made by myself. It's really vulnerable, but I'm really proud of it. I'm also really embarrassed. It's a natural sort of thing." And so, yeah, and I'm turning 40 this year so that's a long journey (laughs) oh I feel you so much I do it's like you're speaking my story you know um you know I I'm craving these conversations and I'm actually craving them for be for them to be more public because I think there's probably a lot of people and I know I know for a fact that there's a lot of people who feel this way, including some people who are in positions of of leadership right now amongst um, and are feeling they're having to perpetuate sort of the old ways of knowing and doing because it's the systems that they're in and they're craving something new and they don't even know how to manifest it. And there's just these pressures to to achieve and to like produce and to, you know, assess and, yeah. all this stuff um so i am really grateful for the opportunity to chat about this and thanks for like sharing your story because i totally hear you <laughs> in, my, yeah. in your story i feel you so much i mean it's funny it's too, like yeah. i always say you know with the workshops i'm like i'm literally wanting to everything i do in a in a service environment and in a teaching environment is trying to be for people what I needed you know it's literally like I needed someone to say this to me and if I got it like way late (laughs) man if I had had this at 14 or 15 or earlier you know these truths that we are music we and we don't have bodies we are bodies we are bodies and our wisdom is innate in us and and we are incomplete as little ones we are complete we have the wonder and the joy and the you know expression available to us the minute we we uh 
we come onto the planet singing as we come out of the womb and with a yeah. heartbeat. Mm. And, and that truth for me has really propelled me to like be, I mean, I really do not, there's no hierarchy in my teaching practice. I don't care if you're two months old or 83. Mm. It's just about people tapping into their amazingness, you know, and how can I throw fertilizer on the awesomeness? You know, I use garden analogies all the time. It's like everyone is a seed. The seed is complete. The flower yeah. lives within that seed. It's yeah. there. It just, and all the environment will, will help to prune, will help to, um, you know, um, you know, cure, you know, cull and, and, and grow and fertilizer and light. And, I meant. You know, I like this. Right? I was I was watching some YouTubes of a guy that does fermentation. It's like we're gonna make kombucha. We're gonna make this. Right. And that metaphor was also came to me today. I was like, that's also what. It's almost like rather than being a teacher, you're facilitating learning, or facilitating discovery, facilitating you know. Yeah. So it's like you just sort of put all that stuff in a jar. So you like you provide the jar or for the fermentation, and then you just sort of wait, and maybe you. Yeah let a little air out you know like you just do these small things that get the the fermentation and the, the and then i love it that it's called it's called a culture and it's a live culture of fermentation. Yeah. oh my god that's and all these things are like circulating uh, and it's bubbling and you're like oh you know and it's got energy because you, know, yes. you release it yeah yes, so it's got that, um, yes. Uh, it's really funny and um, it's delicious yeah <laughs> Something that's essentially rotting can, you know, like transforming. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the butterfly, you know, it's the butterfly. Like we turn into goo and then mm. out comes this butterfly. Um, you know, one of my favorite mantras for the past two years, so there's been a lot of, um, is order, disorder, reorder. Mm. And um, there's this, I, I've listened to a lot of like, wacky podcasts but one of them is this wonderful he's actually like a franciscan monk his name is richard Rohr, mm -hmm. and he um he's just so brilliant he's super worldly and like you know deep but he talks about how transformation can only happen when you're willing to go through these cycles of order right. disorder right. reorder right. and people live in order some people live in order and just spiral around in order. Some people yeah. live in disorder and spiral around in disorder. And those of us who are willing to, you have to have all three in order to do transformative work, to really, mm. really live into this idea of like right. evolutionary, spiritual, whatever you want to call it, transformative process. So we are in a state of disorder right now as a culture. Yeah. And music education has been completely in one fell swoop um, com disorder times a million because everything up to this point, especially with, I would say, grade six and up, self-performance based for the most right. part. And it's, or else it's like all segmented out. You've got performance over here. And then, oh no, you need to learn about things. You need to learn about theory. You need to learn about history. Um, so there's the embodied practice, which is, and then there's the disembodied, <laughs> which is like uh, learning about stuff. Um, and it's not always done in an integrative way where it's like we learn about and then we embody it into our practice or we mm. use it as raw material for creation or, you know, right. in a really overt way where that's actually the concept that we're aiming for. So what happens is in music education, we can feel like we have all these segmented parts that don't always feel like cohesive or like, you know, that it's all kind of working towards a wholeness you know and um it's the way i mean I, I mean i'm no scholar in the history of educational thought i mean i did my master's but what i noticed what we talked about a lot was this whole idea of like in the 50s and 60s everything became structuralist so we have like we 
parted, separated everything out and learned everything in like separate chunks. Right. And one of the things that, what reason I love inquiry and the stuff that you do is that when you're actively engaged with something that is, um, has a life force in terms of like, you know, where it's a, it's a pedagogy of noticing. You're, you're as the facilitator, just noticing stuff and pulling and drawing stuff from what's happening in the room with students at the right. time. Yeah. Um, what you can do is infuse all this knowing, this outside, these concepts or this world yeah. uh, context or theory or you know, could be technological language or what, or instrumental language, uh, it all gets infused um, and can go really deep mm. um, when you don't di- like sort of segment it all out so severely that yeah. there's not an, enough cross pollination or, or integration or um, encouragement to use the skill and knowledge in a way that helps build towards concepts or mm. big ideas. Yeah. Um, so that's why, like for me, um, I I watched just teaching at the university, just a lot of really sort of like exhausted, um, stressed uh, students who weren't seeing the meaning in all of it all the time. Right. They were missing the personal, the, the, the personal, like the, the why, the why, why the does why. this matter for me? Exactly. And how does this, instead it just felt like they're climbing this massive mountain to try and achieve this thing that they don't even know what it is. Yeah. Um, because the teachers are telling them they have to do it and, and not, because the teacher's flipping it on them. Well, how is this? Who are you? What do you love? What are you feeling? What are you yeah. thinking? How is this impacting you? What's yeah. happened in your life that we can bring to the conversation? Um, that doesn't happen in music education very often. It's really teacher yeah. driven. It's yeah. really like, and it's exhausting for teachers <laughs> because it's all on them. Like, I, my meaning, my, my sense of self is completely dependent on my students performing well or sounding right. good or knowing things. Yeah. So if they are not performing well or sounding good or knowing things, that reflects poorly on me because I have to teach them. I have to cajole and convince yeah. and encourage and, you know, so you have 80 students in a room. It's impossible. It's yeah. impossible to... Because every single life experience in that room, they're all coming from very different experiences, very different backgrounds, very different right. environments. And some of them, what they most need is just a safe place. That's yeah. it. It's not about their clarinet playing. It's yeah. like your job is to to be a safe place for them. Yeah. You know? And I know, I don't know about you, but I know for me, like my teachers along the way, um, were moments in my life where my home did not feel like that was the place I could go. Mm. And thank God for those teachers who knew who were there. And I would just sit and chat with them at recess. And, and I just pondering that so much like that. And then the creativity, the possibilities, the potential will grow from that relationship of just safety and feeling seen and feeling loved and, so, I mean, these music rooms are sacred spaces, right? And the music, the performance practice, the, the great work, the amazing performance will grow because <laughs> there's yeah. no better fertilizer yeah. than a place that feels loving and communal. I've noticed um, so many things I could talk about what you just mentioned. But I know about the safety thing. I've noticed, I, have, so I, I don't know if you know I have a kid. She's almost four. Um, and I noticed like just giving her a sense of we're here, me and yeah. my partner, she is fearless. Yeah. And you know, and she'll always just come back, you know, she'll yeah. come back while she'll do the craziest thing and then do some art. And there's there's just this sense of we're here, we got your back. Yeah. 
and and I think that that deep feeling of that I got your back this is a safe place is then you know creates the sense of I mean it's of course not fearlessness but it is sort of like much more risk taking and much more acceptance and not you know like going for weird and exciting and new you know ideas and story making and going and talking to strangers in the street and just having the sense of engagement with the world around yep. you because you know that you know probably I'm that in primal sense yeah. yeah and um, yeah. it's great I mean it's just it- it is, it, I mean, I think probably, I'm assuming, I'm going to assume <laughs> that, you know, if you grew up in an environment where safety wasn't always the feeling, yes. um, and then you have a child, um, and you're aware that, oh, wow, yeah, I didn't feel this safe thing necessarily when I was growing up. So that becomes really important. Like for me, it was like, for Tristan I mean I was literally reading everything I could about like okay mm, this anxiety I feel chronic anxiety I don't want him to have to live with that Mm -hmm. and I know that just this sort of it's and it's not even about saying anything it's just this presence for your child of like you can have whatever feeling you need to have and guess what all of your ideas are fun and fantastic like let's just what do you have to say? What do you want to make? What do you want to yeah. do? You know, yeah. and without a sort of a agenda other than uh, for me, my agenda was do I want him, this is, and this is the intention we had right from the get. I want him to live a life of wonder mm-hmm. and curiosity yeah. and kindness and gentleness to himself and to other people, to be a good citizen, to be conscientious, um, but also just like enjoy all the possibilities and delight in them and let him chase like right now he's just so into harry potter again like he kind of goes through these cycles and he's also reading you know reading julius caesar and he's you know doing all kinds of crazy math stuff but right right now he, and he gets so deep into something like trivia like he like the trivia about it and he wants to know the history behind it and the backstories and like you know just deep dives and sometimes it's like the history of Nintendo or <laughs> like but he's gone through like and so the scholar in me is like honey let's check out some Shakespeare because you're a bright kid or like physics yeah. you know That's <laughs> but he's like no I'm like super into the history of Nintendo like what went on and who you know like, yeah, that's fine really so we're cool. just letting him like and not judging again the safe space not being like you know you should really be checking out all of the classical composers of the you know we're gonna tell you what that's you should funny. Be that sounds like your conditioning of like we should really know more about beethoven yeah like, right like uh, yeah like this isn't you know this is pretty uh you know right so it's, yeah. it's but and and kept catching myself just allowing him to chase whatever it is and trusting that he's learning so much by just being allowed to be into stuff and chase stuff, whatever that is. So I have questions for you. Like I wanted to structure this conversation, but I'm of course in the spirit of (laughs) facilitating. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to sort of look at your life, but then also look at how you, your experiences as developing as a musician and, creating or having these experiences with wonder and sort of like along the line of what you asked me but then I also wanted to ask you how do you facilitate that in others Mm. specifically wonder but also what you just said about your own tendencies to want to direct something Oh, it's hard. How yeah. do you remove yourself mm-hmm. from that equation? Because I have the same problem when I'm facilitating. I want to interject my own, like, oh, it'd be cool if we did this, yeah. but that's not really my job. So it's really challenging to just sort of like, okay, hold your horses. You know, yeah. this is not about you. <laughs> Even though, no. you know, it's, it's kind of it's hard to contain that excitement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you cultivate wonder um, among people who might not experience in that in, that often in themselves and how do you remove yourself once that wonder and 
excitement starts. Right. You're connected. It's been um, a process learning how to do that. It's still, I'm still learning how to do that. Um, I think as teachers, we, um, those of us who love doing this are like being in the middle of it all and directing traffic. It's kind yeah. of fun and to watch, to feel this sense of you know, ownership to what's happening. I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of, of the, the, I'm, of the stuff I've helped to structure and create over the year, the years, just because I've watched incredible work happen. So I, I, I think it's a balance. Like I, you can't, like completely remove yourself from the story. But I think it's like, so the analogy I would use is that um, like when you write an, a jazz album or write jazz tunes, you're creating a boundary and a framework, a form. Right. But then you're, you're allowing the musicians you've hired to interpret the form, however they feel. And, and when it comes once, if, if my form is solid and my structure is solid, the, for, the tune is, the, the song should, people should be able to relax into themselves and do their thing um, easily. So, um, so that there's that, that sort of the preparatory work of creating the frameworks, uh, call them frameworks, um, so that I'm kind of organized, kind of structuring it, but when it comes into the room that I can just do this because the right. structure does the work for me. I don't need, you don't know what I mean? So oh, yeah. and I'm still uh -huh. working on what those frameworks and structures look like. And, and sometimes I'm better than others. Like I'm finding right. it online. Um, it's more difficult to bring in the wonder piece because it's me talking at my computer with PowerPoint and, you know, finding ways to interact and to right. engage and to facilitate. And it's not like wonder. super abstract and open where you sort of like, well, what are we going to do? And then nothing yeah. really happens because it's just everything could happen. And because of that, nothing really happens. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, like too open, I think. Um, people need like, and again, I go back to the early years. I used to teach early years classes, and I found that um, when people sort of kind of know what to expect or get some sort of, even with creativity, I mean, I think a lot of creatives talk about how they need some sort of a like a routine or right. like I just go like I do something creative absolutely every single day as a practice whether anyone sees any of it or not, I do something every day. And right. so it's almost that imagination and wonder needs practice too. Just, just practicing mm. wondering, practicing That's imagination. I so I think, um, I think that there's this idea that it's just all like, you know, but yeah. it actually has to be grounded. So yeah, I would say, um, it, yeah. And, and it depends on, uh, the situation like in certain contexts like and also I think as a teacher who's practicing trying to cultivate wonder you need to practice like it takes time to learn how to do this it's not going to happen like in a minute um, and every time I would teach the class I would adjust things or have different conversations and watch how to unleash you know it's like conversations and my friend Misty says it's more it's more about being super tuned in to noticing people's reactions mm. when they kind of light up or, you know, something, they kind of lean in or you see them do something where their eyes twinkle. Yeah. You can almost see the, the mind going, Oh, you know, mm. so paying attention to that and being like, Oh, okay. That, that was a winning right. thing. Um, when does the energy start to liven up in the room? Like, and so what did we just, what just happened? And so can I take a nugget from that? And so like anything, it takes time and practice and paying attention to what's happening. Um, but for me, it's like, you know, I got very clear about what my philosophy is, what my priorities, what my big concepts are. I mean, and for me, it's cultivating imagination, giving it a chance to interplay with skill and knowledge, um, creating a sense of safety and community in the classroom. Because I know for me, the only way I've ever been able to share anything I've, 
um, made is when I'm in an environment where the people I'm sharing it with, I know love me no matter what, or care about me or feel. So one of the thing that's paramount for cultivating wonder yeah. is creating, setting the, the, ex, the core values right out of the gate. And mm-hmm. I have found that when I do that, we do like a game where I put like core values all over the wall and we right. all find the one that resonates with us. And sometimes it's simple, like drink water, stretch. Um, and sometimes it's profound, like talent is skill plus confidence and both can be cultivated. Yeah. Like people are like, whoa, or you are not your grade. We cannot grade wholeheartedness, courage, uh, tenderness, um, kindness, uh, and, you know, um, vulnerability. Um, How am I grading that? But actually, you know what? If I were to pick a friend, someone who's good at marks, but or someone who's like super brave and vulnerable and kind, I would like hire this person and a million times before the person who's very good at a skill, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I just make that clean. People are like, whoa. So often I do that. And then they, right away, they're like, whoa, these are crazy ideas that no one's ever said out loud to me. <laughs> and I'm getting like 10 of them all at once. Okay. And then we do some game that's like funny, like, you know, would you, you know, or whatever we do, I do ice breaking games. And then, and then right at like, whether I'm teaching theory or like whatever. And I'm like, we're, we're a community of learners here. And you know what, if you don't can't show up or you don't want to show up, I'll still say hi to you in the hall. Don't avoid me. Oh, and by the way, if you are feeling um, like, do not do anything in this class for me, I, I don't want the pressure of like having, don't try and please me, please don't. I don't want that you know, show up for your life. I'm going to show up for my life and we'll, uh, we'll have a good time. And that's all you're required to do is show up for your life. And maybe that's just getting out of bed, Yeah. you know, and maybe you have like, um, some learning challenges and reading is really tough for you. So just come talk to me about it. Like, tell me, tell me where you're at with it oh. and we can work, we can work with that. So just this sort of feeling like wherever you're at, it's okay. We're here to learn. Um, and then what I find is when I set that tone of like, what, she's not judging me, even though there's still the, ju- I said the worst judge is in your own mind, yeah. <laughs> sitting on your shoulder. You yeah. have to tell that person. And I have one too. We have to like hold that person and say, it's okay. You know, the judgment, but at least you guys know that I'm not the one that's lobbing yeah. it on you. You can get rid of that thought of Jody's judging. I just, you know, I'm here to support and guide. So I find that overt conversation, like, this is what I believe. Right. And I am here to facilitate and I am here to support you. And I am here to share some information that I have. Yeah. That, that, the wonder just shows up. It really does. And then I say, now we're going to do these projects. And you can do whatever you want. Come chat with me. And they do. They come and chat with me. And I got to tell you, the work that people, the wit, the, the depth people just go like, oh my gosh, I can share my story. Oh my gosh, I can, yeah. you know, I can, well, one student wrote, so it was pop music history class. She LGB, LGBTQ member um, and wrote these pieces of poetry um, from all the different decades and infused certain key people or songs or, or like, you know, could have been like, uh, David Bowie and like into the, into the poetry as if I'm lying there during the AIDS epidemic in the eighties and listening to some song and, you know, my best friend is dying. And, you know, it was like, you know, crazy, powerful, everyone bawling. Yeah stuff because you know I just say I even in history classes I'm like if you have a vagina or brown skin you haven't really been part of the conversation up to this point but we're gonna change that (laughs) we're gonna celebrate everyone's you know and your story is valid here so um bring your story your history your lived experience so that in a nutshell is is how I um manage to um 
create a sense of wonder was just seeing people. <laughs> like, yeah. I see you and right. I love you. And, you know, we're not allowed to talk about love in classes, I guess, but I do. I'm like, nope. You, you're this great group of people. And I found a couple of things from that. The engagement was so good. People never skip my class. Yeah. Um, and the level of um, deep work that I watched just from setting that tone um, was amazing. And I didn't have to do anything other than just articulate my values and right. what I wish for everyone. So that, yeah. that's what right. I would right. say. Gardening yeah. metaphor, you basically like, you rake the bed, you yep. fertilized it, and then you yep. just had to wait and watch those little things tea. pop out and be like, oh. Yep. Um, it's funny, actually. And sometimes, thinking, sometimes you have to like, you know, if something's growing, it's sniffing, getting big, yeah. and they come in for a meeting, you go, okay, we're going to, your project's like super big. You're like a PhD idea here. So let's, we're just going to trim back, call, you know, do a little pruning. And then it'll, it will grow, but it'll grow longer and taller, maybe right. long term rather than unruly and low to the ground. So we want it to, so yeah. I love, I love the, um, the analogy of the garden. I always, mm -hmm. I go back to it so often because yeah. as I'm older and I can sort of look back at what things have sort of worked in long term it really is a garden you know like a beautiful tree needs so much time to grow and and you know you go back to it and you know and the, and there's still a seasonal thing so you sort of get to do redos but they're not instantaneous but you know it's sort of there's a there's a deep wisdom <laughs> with uh, the garden thing but I, what i remembered and for me that's one of the reasons why i wanted to go and work and classroom is because with my workshopping experience it's always been wham bam you come in one day maybe like you work three days i think tops i worked this mo just few months in south africa for my master's i did a project there and but then you know inevitably i had to say goodbye and not work again so yeah. that sort of lack of of consistent work right. on a garden right you know really lacked for me and uh, so I'm really excited about working with, with the same group of people because what you said, like, you know, you you do this, all these initial things to break the ice, to create that atmosphere. And the next time you come in, you don't have to do that initial step. Right. Like, they already know, like, oh, we're going to do something where it'll be out on a limb, and but it's safe to do it here right. and it'll be exciting. And then sort of you expand that universe. Each and time imagine... A if you're in a school a long time and yeah. you get them at kindergarten, this is the thing that, you know, I also witnessed. So when I was having the students in multiple classes over a few years yeah. and the initial inquiry project or initial project work was maybe a little bit, I, you know, snorkely or like, you know, they went so deep, but then once they get used to yeah. just ruminating with ideas and right. watching ideas come you know watching and figuring out their process for 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 making stuff and who they like working with or what mediums or what they're curious about they, they start to open up to like possibilities and then right. over time the work just goes deeper and they're watching their peers yeah. go deeper and deeper and it just takes on this whole life of its own and it's so like I mean I'm no longer at KPU but I said to the faculty I said just give me the foundation students like give me first year don't know anything I pr I'm, we're going to have potlucks we're going to create a culture of community yeah. um, it, because we were having trouble with retainment, right? Yeah. And I just said, I am we'll do a little experiment. So if we focus on right. creating a sense of community and creating a sense of play with each other and creating a sense of wonder with each other yeah. and, and, you know, enjoy our time in these classes rather than just like sitting at a desk quietly, right. like hearing someone chat at you, yeah. you know, offer opportunities for this. I bet you we will, they won't want to leave their, 
they won't want to leave their people. They won't want to leave their family. I mean, this is, and what music can do, like, this is the magic of music. It can create family among strangers, like, right away. And for me, so an like, extension of that is that you could get students to be motivated to deepen their skill set yes. from the inquiry. If they yes. want to know something and they want to progress on their instrument, in a, even in a very technical sense, Yes. having that baseline motivation of like oh i want to be able to do that because i discovered this and this and this about whatever yeah. charlie parker or let's say in jazz or something else technical you won't have to sort of pull teeth to get yeah. them to practice because they're going to want to do it anyway so cajole them into like working on stuff right exactly. like it, it i mean i was like oh music is too hard of a life to give a hard sell like I'm not doing it no. like, I'm just no. I'm not gonna like recruit and kind of manipulate people to do the work like I yeah. just that makes me want to throw up like it's like like it just feels like I well and we don't sh shouldn't need to because music's rad it's just yeah rad mm -hmm. and we just need to be rad and then invite the people who are really like kind of like it lights them up too to come and hang out with us and yeah. we all just get to be lit up by exploring making sounds together and exploring creating stuff beautiful things together I mean it's so simple but the why then the question is like well why I mean I think I would argue that elementary and high school teachers the ones that, the, you know, they, they they understand. I mean, that not everyone in the room is going to become a musician and yeah. professional or whatever. Um, and they're, they're shifting. I'm watching it all the time to, um, it's it, to, there's people who really are trying to cultivate this, this, these feelings of community and, and that, that that is their number one priority and that they are a safe place for students. And there's plenty of that happening. Um, uh, I think that we could be maybe a little bit braver at offering different frameworks to yeah. explore. Um, but um, I certainly don't want to criticize what's happening because there's absolutely, I think in a lot of ways, the level of music education is higher as than it's ever been. Yeah. And the, the heart centered teaching is incredible. Where I notice it gets a little trickier is at the post-secondary level. Um, and, and part of it, I think, is because a lot of teachers who work um, in the elementary and high school settings are teacher artists. Like they see their teaching as an art part of their artistic practice, as opposed to at the post-secondary level. We have a lot of practitioners who happen to teach, you know, conductors who yeah. like want to conduct and are now teaching conducting. So the art of the teaching it, they may have never ever had a conversation about well, what does it mean? What are the conditions of learning? What uh, environment? How do people learn? Like how how what are the conditions for for learning concepts? Mm -hmm. um, probably not spend a lot of time thinking about phenomenology and and embodied practice or arts based research or multiple or even ways of examining learning. their own journey. To Pardon me. It, or even examining their own journey at a maybe a more vulnerable level to be right. able to be like this is how I got here you know person yeah. to person I can I can I can reflect back and see why you're struggling at 21 yeah you know to have that sort of I see you entering. I feel you yeah, yeah. and and I mean I, I I you know you don't want to paint a brush with like no please this way or not but I do know if you just anecdotally, you know, talk to people who finished music degree and say, how are you feeling? And you're ready. They're there. Most of them feel um, depleted, um, exhausted, mm. um, you know, like, I can't wait to get out of here. And, um, and that really is, um, is unnecessary like it's unnecessary in this day and age we know so much like how do you there's so much research around how to cultivate a community how to cultivate effective um environments for people and how they feel you know 
less exhausted and taxed. Um, so um, yeah, and also like the, all the research around uh, sort of the the new paradigm, which is the 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 way we view our students as as full, capable, and uh, co creators with us. Um, so rather than having all the answers all the time as teachers, it's learning how to ask really good questions. Like, well, what do you see in this? What do you, what does, what makes you think this? What makes you feel this way? What makes you, what do you hear? What do you hear in this? You know, or even a bigger question. What do you love? Like what, Exactly. Are you loving right now? How can we help you chase that? <laughs> that's why that's why I'm such a big, you know, promoter of creative practices because yeah. they're innately going to come from an inside place of interest or wonder. Maybe not in the first, depending on the person, maybe, you know, but it, it's it expands the whole thing. It's almost more of a mindset of abundance. Because totally. You, you have less, also just less space to do a very black and white comparison of performance, you know, success or failure. And, you know, like there's, it's less rigid shape that you need to fit into to sort of get through that um, experience of education was well, well, when you're creating or making something alone or together even better you know it's just like the whole thing sort of expands rather than implodes on itself yeah. and um and that expansion is also is much more energizing you know because you're not sort of you're not you're not trying to fight off this pressure of doing it a certain way. Mm. You know, you're more at the same time, maybe that's what makes it vulnerable because you have to open up to go expand. So it's, it's a scary prospect too. Yeah. But I feel it's, it has so much more potential. I mean, yeah. You know, um, well, as I showed in that, um, webinar the work that those mm -hmm. students did yeah um it was amazing by the way like those some of those were just like whoa my god yeah Your right sister secretly chatted to me it was like oh my god my mind is blown and yeah like kelly spoke yeah. with <laughs> yeah and i mean this is not even like i have more there's more yeah, like you know, those sure. were just like some of the ones that were just like whoa okay that is really interesting and that yeah. I couldn't even come up with. I mean, I think I mentioned the one about with the baking. Like it was like Yeah, there's that one. There's the Billy Holiday one with the Yeah, the Billy Holiday and one. The really intricate the furniture. And yeah. Like yeah. The furniture was amazing. Yeah, one. right? It's the furniture design out of the taking music on. So I mean, uh yeah, I I mean that's just why I like my whole being is so um just wanting to spread the word about this and yeah. how easy it was it was so yeah. easy it's so easy I just like basically so I was explaining in again the garden analogy I mean the projects are like you plant the bulbs in the fall so you plant yeah. the bulbs and then you go about your fall and your winter stuff I mean, you could be rehearsing ensembles. Yeah. And underneath the ground are these bulbs that are wait, that are growing, that are rooting, yeah. that are. And then all of a sudden, in the spring, whoop, up comes oh, all these beautiful yeah. projects that you've just been checking in on yeah. over the course of the year. And these are for individual projects, but you could certainly have them assign them in groups. So, and uh, when it's part, so what happens with students? like for real is that behind the scenes behind the scenes they are doing all this stuff anyway right they're at home like learning how to do acapella recording yeah. things they're like learning some song on the guitar they're writing songs with their friends uh you know at the park they're um jamming with people they're doing all kinds of stuff because we do like making stuff and there yeah. are some kids who were like so 
they're doing it at the side of their desk, uh, sort of. And this is like, I saw this even at the, the BSO when I was teaching or working there. It's like all these creative people doing these creative, having creative ideas and having all these creative expertise that aren't invited into the meeting or the table and like, well, hey, what can we make stuff? Who likes to do this or that or blah, 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 like writers and arrangers and mm. like, well, they have all this like creative power in this space and we kind of, people have a role or the job and they do that and then all this yeah. juice is happening that isn't part of the conversation. So it's the same thing with students in music, right? But because um, we're like, well, no, no, like I had a friend who, one of the friends who did our, our um, lecture, our webinar, um, teaches theory at Humber. And mm -hmm. I was saying the inquiry project invites people. So we have a bunch of metalheads in her class at Humber studying jazz because, well, that's the option. Yeah. And she's like, oh my gosh, like in my theory class, I, if I do it as a project-based thing and not add the genre like box and just say use this material use this information in a project that they can do whatever they want as long as they're showing their learning it's about this is I'm showing my learning to you I'm making my learning visible you know yeah but we're not as teachers imposing our own judgment our own biases our own um life story really Right. I mean, our, our valuing system that comes from our life experience on the students. And when you have a, a student body, which is multi-race, multi-background, multi-gender, mm. we have to, indigenous, we have to find ways to bring voice into our classrooms. Yeah. And that the European conservatory model of education values white men from Europe, bless your heart, but it values white men from Europe and those voices over the plethora of voices and music in that's happening all over the world. Yeah. And we still live with the structure that is based on that assumption. So whether it's history class, whether it's any music degree, really. And, and that's why a lot of jazz artists were like, well, you know, um, we're just not at the table because it was an African-American art form. I mean, it's literally a hundred years ago, Art Tatum was playing in dives and, you know, uh, Rostopovich and, and uh, you know, we're coming in like after their gig at wherever the Met, they're showing up and watching Art Tatum play, but he would never have been playing in Carnegie Hall. Yeah. I mean, that's just what we've been dealing with. So we're all, now that's all on the table. We're like, okay, yeah, that sucked. And we need to change these things. So people are going, well, how do we change these things? Cause we have these structures. And for me, inquiry and offering the info, it's still great info. It's still, you know, theory and harmony and it's all good stuff. Yeah. Here's the info, but let's look at the big concepts and how that those concepts connect and not sort of segment out and silo. Like, how does this, how does this all connect us all? Mm. And this is where music, if we switch this, it can be transformative. It can be part of the answer to what we're doing right now. And I, like I swear, artists, I'm not, I know, I know I'm all like, you know, here's my TED talk pontificating, but I swear based on what I saw in my classes, um, it, it was like, oh God, this is, uh, this is a healing thing to do, you know, so. Well, that's what's the most important thing, I think, for you is that you are looking back and at experiences that you've seen in the students that you witnessed you're like oh my god people uh, you know it's not like you having some half-baked ideas that might be great but you're actually looking at this is really impacting these students yeah the same with me with the workshops like hey yeah. we need to be doing this parallel to whatever classical jazz thing like people you know, we need to be making things, we need to make things together because it's also yes. a different thing. And just allowing people to make things, make things, yes. make things together, uh, share the, you know, and have these experiences that are that are personal and authentic and, and 
like you said, giving a voice. Like you can't give a voice by talking at that plethora. <laughs> like, here you go. Um, I'm here. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. That's why I like when you say facilitating learning or co-learning, co-creating, collaborating. That's where the thing gets for its ongoingness. So it's just ferment. <laughs> ferment. It's the kombucha, music kombucha. kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh man, well wow. how do we how do we how do we um so what I'm grappling how with, how do we do it? And how do we um this is what I'm grappling with is is what well, a venue, a platform, a way of inviting this way of thinking into more spaces. And which is why I'm just so glad we're connecting. And I think, you know, we have some collaborators emerging, um, even with the elementary cohort that I, there are people who are like kind of into trying this stuff. And then I have this friend who's really good at concept based kind of pinning it into like a frameworks that mm -hmm. can help people who are maybe afraid of this sort of um mm -hmm. understand how what what we can how to how to how to um springboard this in their own teaching practice without yeah. it feeling like well I've never actually written or made anything in my life uh and I'm a She's musician okay, yeah. you know there are, there are music teachers who've been brought up in this environment who I get it. I get play it. a concert I mean, band and playing singing choir and they they've never actually imagined themselves as being creative creatives well my ideas just are get teachers together and do that in that sort of spirit of horizontality get every like you said doesn't matter if you're two months old or 78 years old yeah. we're all in that sort of essential self wonder and get get those teachers practicing wonder i think group activities are good because you're not sort of singled out as why don't you make something amazing now on your own and show us all that sort of perpetuates that fear and doing it together I would love to see more side-by-side -side creation of uh, practitioner artists and and up-and-coming music students, amateur musicians of all yeah. ages. I think that sort of connection needs to happen more where, you know, I don't know if I told you about this project, Orchestra Nova. I did it two it, sessions. Yeah. Well, the idea was to have like a um, creative youth ensemble, but from kids from all different schools, mainly high school kids, but you know, have a certain, maybe like a wider a window of ages. And then bring in, so you come in and you do workshops and you create stuff. And it could be conceptual, but maybe also have regular projects where you bring in a, 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 an artist, let's say we bring, bring in you and we choose one or two compositions of yours and we basically use those compositions or even just some concepts, artistic concepts as springboards to make a new piece and then have the artist come in and see how they can reconceptualize their piece and then do a performance together. So it's really sort of, like a remix uh, we need song. to do this at the vso school so don't get a job right away okay <laughs> i'm planning on being a toc anyway for okay great definite future so, so it works but that i've seen that in europe we need to um, make this happen like yeah. and like it can soon totally work right and, like yeah. soon um do well it. a minute we can all be in the same space together but in yeah. the meantime we can sort of be thinking and planning for this yeah. um because this is exactly, um, I want the BSO jazz program in particular to be a bit of a laboratory for this kind of stuff. Um, I know, um, and they're pretty cool about letting me try stuff. Like I have this senior group that meets called the Capo and mm -hmm. people like we jam. And I would think I was telling you, it's just, it's a big jam session, but then I throw some information in the middle of it, like, hey, you can practice this and this and this. And mm -hmm. 
um, again, it's community building. We have coffee after, and it's 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 just a chance to gather in a chill environment. But they are growing like they're kidding. <laughs> there's such improvement. They're so committed, and they're learning, and it's fun, and there's a sense of community building. So, um, unfortunately, we can't do it right now. But but I would love to see um, even like. Um, you know, even if we do like a jazz workshop where every morning we do like a collaborative composition and you can come in and be that person, that would be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would because, even venture to, to not keep it strictly a jazz thing. Genres are very hard to put in there. Yeah, well, you but know, you know but, what? You know, we yeah. don't, we don't. We do yeah. like in the jazz workshop, like we've had um, like, oh, we're doing like New Orleans yeah. street beats. And then we, we would do um, some free, like I did a bunch of workshops around yeah. color and improvisation and, yeah. you know, using um, sensual language of the senses. Right. And, right. yeah, it was all kinds of like, right. it's a, and we have like a, a movement, like a dance. Um, yeah. I make them do dance. Um, and, and creative writing so many dance artists in vancouver that are amazing like, right like more having my idea was for this orchestra nova that eventually because my of my uh, my partner's involvement she she's just taught teaching a lot in at arts umbrella and, but yeah. they also have like a pre-professional program with, yeah like, yeah with, yeah with dancers and just having like well let's do let's have this ensemble make music for young dancers oh my God, or have it. it sort of a back and forth conversation where they would Absolutely. maybe work on a choreography or some sort of even improvisatory co concept off of that and then you know sort of just just a collaborative back and forth thing even without a definite sort of end product it's, it's again it's just like a, a culture i, I um, just let's just do this yeah but the other thing i'd love to do um along with that um, would be to offer, if we get it up and running, is offer um, some sort of professional development or even just auditing where teachers can come and watch you work and participate even, like bring your instrument and you get to come. And so even just offering, so to be right? Honest. Like just That's come. That's we learned in Holland. We would yeah. just do them from these people from the UK and it yeah. would just be the funnest week ever. Right, right. Oh. So, um, you know, this is where, but then, you know, as I'm, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I'm really thinking of doing um, at, to kind of perpetuate this conversation is to start some sort of a like a this recording conversations with people yeah. who are grappling with these things or have some experience yes. um just to start the conversation going about um where we're at and where we can go and yeah. um because i think um I think people are hungry for this. And I think if there's people kind of quietly feeling some of these feelings who may not feel that they have community or people who feel the same way, you know? And um, yeah. And another thing I was thinking about is, a, is some sort of a retreat, eventually when we're all in line. Um, this was something I really want to do. I kind of see it as like a creativity retreat or like a healing <laughs> retreat for music school. So professionals who are looking for, because my friend Celeste too is the embodiment dance. Um, she does powerful work along the body. Um, I have a friend who is, um, she's amazing, who does work on anxiety and, and dealing with like, high vibrational feelings in the body around yeah. music keen. um and then some a vocal type exploration so it's really about like a creativity workshop for in for musicians and inviting people who don't normally get to explore their imagination and their practice like maybe yeah. people who are gigging a lot and just and just who are wanting sort of a rejuvenating weekend yeah. of creation co-creation with people yeah um not even don't call it jazz because jazz is a dirty word for people there's a lot of well i know like my friends in the uk that that i've learned this from they they all tell you at the same time they made an ensemble and they mm -hmm. create all their music this way and it's great 
is because it's I mean the music is so diverse because somebody will come in with an idea and then this is that little kernel and then have the group develop it um, it's it's a really powerful experience I have to say it's it's such a bonding experience too yeah. for the community um, yeah. and 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 it's also it's great because it does again it doesn't put pressure on one person you know something will happen because there's just so many people there and you don't need to be the driver you don't need to be the main responsible person you know, you know like you don't have to put your stamp on it and be like oh you don't know, feel like the weight of the world is on you yeah the weight of the world is on a little bit on all of us so you know, together we other, just, you know. the other part of that that i think um helps people try stuff is if we say we're not recording this this is yeah. not for public consumption this is just for us yeah. and um you know unless it's just so magical that everyone's like no we need to record it we all want a copy but i always make sure that that is a conversation because a lot of time people are really afraid now to like yeah. do anything because what if someone's filming it or taking pictures or... yeah, that's tricky mm-hmm. tricky it but then tricky. again if you're not and then something magic happens and you didn't record it you're like oh i know i know i um, know I have a band that now our our concept is I I just set up everything record all the whole rehearsal because it's mm-hmm. you know all, magic always happens when you don't expect it and then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah you could always you could have conversation I mean the culture that you're talking about cultivating in those groups you can have a conversation about recording and seeing how to deal with that Um, it's interesting too because i find like um people who are not quote-unquote trained like who haven't gone through formal education don't have the same hang-ups as those that have you know and so um but so when i'm with those folk their their insecurities lie in the not knowing you know yeah. and sometimes in the like oh, I don't really know what's happening I can't read music and I feel yeah. insecure so you know exactly what I, you're talking about I'm just pretty me no I know exactly what you're talking about the guitarist in this band he can't read music but yeah. he can do things that none of my educated friends can do it's just this and and they like you say they both have their sort of and we all have our grass is greener on the other side yeah. sort of insecurities um, yeah it's really funny yeah. And interesting to, to see so interesting i know we're not really looking at those questions i think we've kind of covered all of them. i'd rather have a conversation because i'm really happy when you ask me a question how it should be um maybe we should wrap it up because i actually Have yeah, I got to go with so, you. Go ahead. Um, how do you feel if I send you this video and you scan through it? I could transcribe it into, but I could also just leave it as a video. I'll just mm-hmm. chop off that first part where you were maybe a little bit too personal and vulnerable. Yeah. There was a moment where we were almost like started talking about yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll stuff. start from there to here and then I'll sort of go through it and see. Sure. And I don't want to cut anything, but you look, your hair is good. My hair is good. <laughs> <laughs> you have a face in the back. I brushed it. Yay. Like so. Um, I so, it yeah, I'm, I don't think I've said anything that I haven't said publicly or it's not, um, you know, even the stuff about the university. I mean, there's truth to that. I mean, it's just I university we professors or... Pretty me. I think we were careful about it, but also not too tiptoe. Yeah, I just because you can't be too tiptoe either. I mean, you know what? I at this point, I sort of feel like, you know, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm basing all of my um, uh, observations on like real life. Well, what happens when you don't teach from that? when you let go of the rain, when you let go of the rope, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, wow, really good stuff happens and yeah. people show up, yeah. 
you know yeah. and and people can say well you just you have charisma people like you well but why you know what it's not that I'm some genius person with brilliant things to say all the time um you're I think interested people, in people. I think pardon that's me whole, you're interested in people when you're yeah. curious about other people then then it's that whole the listeners yeah. are the people who are interested are the interesting ones. So, yeah. I mean, I think like I'm just sure. super like, and I'm always looking at how, well, how can we evolve or how can we make this even better, you know? Um, and I know that the environments I grew up in, there were some wonderful things about them for sure musically like you know my band teachers were amazing and my music teacher and they they served a purpose for the time of history that they were functioning in mm -hmm. and they were as they needed to be at that yeah. time moment in history yeah. given the culture but nowadays we don't need to be the carriers of the knowledge no. they can go with one click of a google search that engine click. find practitioners ten thousand times beyond what i can do yeah so our job is very different now. We can't pretend to know more than we know because they can smell the crap like very the quickly. The funny thing is, I think this is a better place to be. You know, it's like, it's less task oriented. Like you don't need, it's less tiring to have to carry this world of knowledge and be this sort of scholarly, you know, like untouchable person. And you get to cultivate that sense of wonder as a teacher in what are your students going to come up with? Like yeah. those projects that you shared with us, which were just like, whoa, I wonder what they're going to make, you know? So yeah. it's, again, it's that whole thing. Like it's a self-perpetuating energy ball that will just grow if we just let it. Um, yes, yes, it's, yeah. it will grow. And the thing is, well, the other part that was really interesting was through some of this, I was making my own album and I was just sharing my process. Mm. So I'd be like, hey, we're in the studio. Can I share? This is not mixed, but I'm going to share. And oh, I'm working on this video. And oh, by the way, so how are your projects going? Okay, I'm just going to chat about what I'm working on right now. And yeah. like, oh, you That's know, <laughs> and I would share like challenges and whatever. And then when, when it finally got released and we finally like, you know, it got done and everything. I mean, they were part of the, like, I even like ran lyrics by a student was like, can you come into the practice room? Like, which one? Like, she's a vocalist. I'm like, can you sing this? And just like, how does it feel as a vocalist feel? to sing yeah. this word versus this word? Yeah. So, I mean, there were chances of like, not hierarchy, like, oh yeah, I'm so yeah. together. I know how to do everything. I'm like, actually, I'm working with lyrics. This is new to me. I'm working on this. Um, you're actually a vocalist. You sing words all the time. You have some expertise here. Do you mind just, and like you could tell just with the body language of mm. like, oh, you know, yeah. like, oh, oh. And it just demystifies mm. the process that we overly romanticize Yeah, based on this, you know, genius myth, the you know, and it's marketing ploy. It's the music oh, industry is yeah. full of like, oh, you know, so and so is just this like larger than life with the smoke and mirrors and the pyrotechnics in the yeah. in the um, you know in the in the shows and everything's like over the top. You know, again, creating this illusion of uh, expertise and specialness. Yeah. And I and people perpetuate that even so without much. many cues. They're just they're used to sort of doing that anyway. Yeah. And as someone who was in, you know, it's jazz, so we have five fans, but you know, in sort of the spotlight a little bit at times, you know, whether it's you know, whether the Juno stuff or whatever, feeling the weight of that, like mm. when that sort of success started I was like oh my god like oh uh, like mm. I don't know there's so much I don't know they're gonna find out that I don't know stuff yeah. like uh, I've like pulled the wool over everybody's eyes I actually suck you know <laughs> that's that's 
so but then you go out in public and you're like you know oh I gotta like yeah like and I you know people would say oh I guess you don't want to play with me anymore because you know and I'd be like no no nothing's changed I'm still Jody like uh, so yeah. it made me go oh okay so yeah when I was doing my master's just contemplating the whole notion of genius and the genius artist and then looking at the history of it and well why why is creativity used as a word it was like a marketing new and improved it's like mm. part of the American culture of exceptionalism and but right. I mean even back with Paganini and stuff I mean we they, there was a lot of hype around certain composers or certain performers because well, it was a way to get butts into seats or money thrown at whatever. So it's the hype... Like religious it's figures, it's mystifying something. Totally. It's smoke and mirrors and like... Ooh. It's all about the hierarchy. Yeah. So what we need to do is acknowledge that that's the way everything's been structured yeah. to um, basically perpetuate these people that kind of sit on top and everyone else just feels less than. Yeah. And I'm done with that. I do not want my son to feel less than anyone. I don't mm. want your child to feel less than anyone. I want them to feel their full, amazing potential of awesomeness. Yeah. And I want every student who comes in my room to feel that. Yeah. I want them to know that they are more than enough. They have everything that they need. They are capable and they are full of information and, and wonder and imagination and brilliance. Oh, wow. Right? You they should be just, a religious leader. Well, <laughs> but no, I don't want to be. No, I don't want to be a guru. Kidding. Like, no, I don't, but I want to just say amen to that. Right? Yeah. So it's no, like, sure. oh, wait a minute. What if everyone started knowing that in their body? What if everyone started really knowing that? Whoa. And we creating from that place with others who knew that too it, i mean it that's will how be we're a much more fix. interesting world too right it'll just so be like, interesting it'll just be more diverse it'll be like a like a thick colorful jungle you know like if from a storybook just totally. you don't even know where to look it's so wonderful everywhere totally, totally. Mm -hmm.